Casey and the Sports Doctor is brought to you by the MJ Sullivan Automotive Corner. Welcome sports fans to Casey and the Sports Doctor, the show about sports, all sports, big and small, where you, the audience, help to drive the topics of conversation through social media. As always, I am your host, Casey O'Neill. And I'm the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien. Special thanks once again to Philomena's Restaurant right here in Waterford, Connecticut for their wonderful hospitality. Now you can find our question of the week. You can rant, submit comments and questions as always on our various social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram right there on your screen. And we love when you give us audience input. On today's show, the High School Passing League has just finished, the Little League and Babe Ruth World Series are just beginning, and the Olympics are in full swing. But first, gotta pay some bills. MJ Sullivan Hyundai wants you to take the summer off from car payments. Zero payments for six months, with the first three months on them. Plus 0% financing, wow. Stop in today for more details. MJ Sullivan Hyundai. All right, so Sports Doctor, New London High School just won the High School Passing League. Does this signal big things for the upcoming season, or is it just a glorified pickup game? No, I see it as big things for New London, and the reason why I say that, Casey, is I saw a lot of enthusiasm on the sidelines the other night, and I think that's what New London needs right now. They have new leadership in Juan Roman and a lot of enthusiasm on the sidelines. Granted, it's 7-on-7, seven seven, no pads, but any kind of victory is a good victory. I think this is a very good building block for New London football. Well, I mean, it certainly can't hurt, right? It's better to, to win the, any uh, endeavor that you take part in. I'm a little cautious because my experience in football is that the passing league's a little bit like the AAU basketball leagues where uh, you can get out into open space and things are, aren't really telling. When the weather starts getting cold and the games start getting played on the ground and you're blocking and running the ball, it, it sort of separates things. New London High School's biggest problem over the past few years was their own mistakes. So really what it comes down to is whatever the showing in the high school league uh, was, it's going to be what Juan Roman can do to tighten up the ship. Yeah, for a group of kids that seemed to lose interest last year at the end of the season for New London football, I think their interest has peaked after Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Time for a segment called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I'm going to give the sports doctor a topic, and he is simply going to tell me in one sentence or less why it's good, bad, or in some cases, ugly. You ready, sports doctor? I'm ready to roll, Casey O'Neill. All right. A-Rod moving into the front office. Ooh, bad, bad move. I mean, the Yankees have been trying to get rid of him for years. They're taking him off the field. Now they're putting him in the front office. I don't think New York is in love with A-Rod anymore. A-Rod is the Darth Vader of the, of the baseball world. Darth Vader pre-redemption. Yeah. Just an evil figure we all love to dislike. Prince Fielder's retirement. Um, good move. You know, Prince Fielder, obviously, he's got some health issues. He's got a, you know, a bad back and a bad neck. So maybe it's time for him to hang it up and salvage his life down the road. I'd say ugly, except he finished with exactly the same yes. amount of home runs as his dad. So what's better than that? Time yes. for him to get out. Tape delayed Olympic events. <laughs> you got me going to the Olympics again, don't you? Um, I will say... Bad. I mean, just bad in the fact that we think we're watching these things live and they happened probably an hour ago for some of those events. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. If I want to watch a sporting event, I want to watch it happening right then and there. Information has become so instant. Yeah. We've almost learned what's going to happen in the future sure. so fast that you can't tape delay an event because no one is in, in the dark anymore. Every, you'd have to, you have to go into radio silence with headphones and a blindfold not to know well, who Who's going to watch it? No, I already know the outcome, Casey. No, no, absolutely bad. Wichita State's basketball coach. Oh boy, Greg Marshall, it's a bad move. Bad career move, coach, there. I mean, in a, what, a summer league game versus McGill College? Are you kidding me, coach? Yeah, bad move there, Casey. If you haven't seen it, uh, you, you, need watch to go, it. you need to go and watch this. Uh, I, ugly is the only word I can think of. When you have to have, if your players need to hold you back from attacking an official, you've probably gone astray. For five minutes? That's just <laughs> yeah. uh, $200 a night. In Ottumwa, Iowa. Uh, I don't think that this is very good at all. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, the New Waterford kids are going out there. I, I think there should have been some sort of deal made between the, you know, the Babe Ruth World Series people and some of the hotels in the area. 200 bucks a night to, to stay in Ottumwa, Iowa. That's a little steep, in my opinion. It's all three. It's good for capitalism, it's sure. bad for the parents of the Waterford kids who have to pay it, and it's ugly that the Babe Ruth in Iowa couldn't figure out a way to cut these kids 
uh, some slack knowing the World Series was Yeah, it just way. seems like, the, you know, the, the town is going to make their money in other ways. So just hitting these kids up from coming across the country, I, I think it's a little I think it's a little cheesy. Hotel's a national chain. It's not part oh, of the town. Okay. All right, Tim Tebow, baseball player. Oh, that's just bad. I mean, Tim Tebow, are you kidding me? The baseball player? No, he's failed miserably at becoming an NFL quarterback. Uh, he is now a member of the SEC Network as a host, but now he's going to throw his hat into the ring and try baseball. Haven't we seen this uh, rodeo done once before? And it's called, and it's ugly. It's if yeah. anyone's seen Michael Jordan swing a baseball bat, it's ugly. Tim Tebow's a good announcer. He should stick with the SEC. But the arrogance of athletes that think they can go and play other sports, when he fails miserably, what's next? Is he going to have Michael Phelps teach him how to swim and maybe four <laughs> years from now get in the pool? Yeah, hang it up, Tebow. I, I just don't see you playing baseball. Just be a preacher and an announcer. You're good at both things. So I've got to ask myself, what in the world are you wearing, Casey O'Neill? I am not Casey O'Neill. I am Carnival Casey. And I am here to look into my crystal ball and tell you the future. Please do. All right. <laughs> we want A-Rod. We want A-Rod. Well, clearly, it's what the Red Sox fans were chanting last night in Boston. No. No, it's what the casting director of next year's Dancing with the Stars is chanting right now. <laughs> Hold on, I'm seeing more now, I'm seeing more. The Green Mile, Suicide Squad, and Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. Oh, all movies, Casey O'Neill, they're all movies. Uh, Green Mile is one of my favorites. No, no, no. The Green Mile is the Olympic diving pool. <laughs> Suicide Squad is the name of any team trying to swim outside of Rio, and eight heads in a duffel bag is probably the next obstacle they're gonna find in the rivers outside of Rio. I'm not too sure what kind of special powers that hat gave you. Hold on, I'm seeing it. Jake, I'm seeing Jake from State Farm. Oh, the guy from the commercial. No. The khakis. No, it's, it's who Bill Belichick is going to call into camp to replace Jimmy Garoppolo as quarterback. <laughs> You're saying that Garoppolo is not going to succeed? Uh, no, I'm saying nothing. This <laughs> oh, is this all. Is what the, you're getting all that from the ball. From the magic, oh, from the magic boy, ball. Boy. Wait, it's dancing in the street. Mick Jagger song, Rolling Stones. No, no, this is what South African swimmer Chad Laclos is doing now that he's <laughs> failed in his attempts to get into Michael Phelps' head. Dancing in the street. Get inside your head. Dan never mind, Michael Phelps. You might never escape, my friend. Wait, I have, <laughs> I have one last one in here. I think I can. We will rock you. Another one bites the dust. We are the champions. I got that. Those are all classic Queen songs. Music right up my alley, Casey O'Neill. Yes, but they are also the soundtrack of this week's Waterford 13-year-old World Series appearances. Good luck, boys. Doctor's Notes, brought to you by Jordan Chiropractic. 1978 ECAC basketball tournament. Providence College, BC, URI, and UConn. That's the first basketball game my dad took me to. Probably the first thing, the first thing is father and son in the world of sports that we actually did together. First trip to Fenway Park, I remember that very well. And the first time I went to the old Yankee Stadium, we sat so high, I got a nosebleed and that's where I established my fear of heights. Boy, what a place that was. You could all have been there. Yankee Stadium, the old ones. Yukon hoop games versus Yale. Fenway trips. All of it. Did with my dad when I was younger. But nothing brought us together like Yukon basketball. The Connecticut Mutual Classic. Every single year in Hartford. Four teams battling out, watching our state team play at it. And just, just a good time being with my dad. So a lot of great times in sports that I can remember as a kid. And it could have been a time or two where my dad snuck me into the Plainfield dog track when I was 16 or 17. Just don't tell anybody about that. Two different people going down similar paths. My dad was a guy who was always into working on cars or working in the garage. I was into playing sports and I was into playing in the band as well. But we were always connected by the sporting events. Always stayed together, father and son. Well, in August 2003, we were all through for a loop in the family. My dad was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And if you haven't been through this, it's very, very tough. And it kind of redirects your life as far as what's important. You know, as a son, tried to be supportive for my dad. If whatever he needed, I was there for him. 
Well, lung cancer patients don't really survive that long. You're normally given two or three years. I've been blessed with 13 years with my father since August 2003. And it's funny because it didn't stop us from doing those things that we enjoyed to do together, as in sports. We went to Fenway for Father's Day in 2005. Can't tell you the numerous times we've been to Connecticut Sun Games and just enjoying life together. Simplified, scaled back, yes. But sports has always been that common bond. If I ever had a bad day, I had a bad day, I called the, pick up the phone and called my father. He always made me feel better. And at 47 years old, going through radio, broadcasting, and making my way as my own man, tonight's a very special night because my dad is here tonight. He is part of this live audience. And I can't tell you what it means to me. So I guess the message is this. Enjoy time with your parents. Find that common bond, whatever brings you together. 13 years, I would say my father's beaten cancer. And that is your note from the doctor. Dr. Jordan's extensive clinical experience as a certified athletic trainer, certified sports physician, and time as a college athlete gives her a unique approach to treating athletes. She treats athletes of all ages and abilities, from beginners to first-time marathoners to professionals. Do you ever wonder what it's like to play college football? Do you ever wonder what it's like to play college football at one of the most academically challenging places in the country? Have you ever wondered what it's like to serve your country? Well, how about doing all of that at one time? If that's something that interests you, well, our guests tonight can talk a little bit about that. We've got Coast Guard Academy head football coach Bill George and starting quarterback Derek Victory. That's right. Victory is in the house tonight on Casey and the Sports Doctor. <laughs> so Derek, let me start off with you. How, how about that? What, what is a day in the life of a Coast Guard Academy quarterback? Uh, the, the day in the life for me is busy. Uh, it starts at 6 a.m. every single day. Um, and it's, it's structured too, which I like. I like the organization that it has. But um, go to class from basically 8 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I usually have a couple hours off, but for the most part, that's pretty full. Uh, practice goes from about 4.30 to probably 7, um, eat a quick dinner, and then it's homework for the rest of the night. Now and it's like that every night, too. What are you studying? Uh, I'm majoring in government right now. In government mm -hmm. right now. So when, when is the Coast Guard and Academy keg party? When is that? That's not, that's not on <laughs> not my agenda. Not a thing. Not a thing. Uh, Coach, 18 years on the job. This is you're entering your 18th season. And I'd imagine that, you know, Derek's got to be, you know, smart to play in your offense. They're all smart, and, and we do run a complicated offense, but you have guys that are very book smart. Football and, smart? And football smart, and they can turn it on at four o'clock. I, I, you can have an offensive lineman who can decipher NFL blitzes and ask a Supreme Court justice a question in the next hour, and those are the kind of guys these guys are. So I, they, I mean, do they have to be that way, though, to go to the Coast Guard Academy? Yeah, I, I'd say you have to be well-rounded, you have to be a leader in all situations, whether it's on the field or off the field. And these guys are football. They know how to turn it on and turn it off. And they're football fans, but they know they have other uh, agenda, too. Is it different, do you think, coaching kids are that smart? I I've heard, you know, that in when you want people to sort of follow orders, sometimes being too smart can lead to some paralysis. Are these, I mean, is it you ever encounter that with kids that are almost too smart? No, I, I think that... The only thing you have to do is you have to fit it into that schedule of the academy. I don't think they're any different than other football players. Some of the stuff uh, you have to make sure you drill. You can't put a surprise play in at the last minute. They'll say, well, we didn't practice enough because they're used to drilling. You know, so you've got to make sure you set it up as a drill. But for the most part, no. It's the academy structure that you have to weave the football into. Now, Coach, you guys run the spread, uh, the spread bit of a read option type of offense. What is the challenges that you may have as a staff because you don't go out and get a chance to hand pick your kids. Your kids come to you. Um, there's a different bit of feel in the recruiting process. Well, we're recruiting. We're out there actively recruiting. We just don't get to pick everybody you want. They've got to meet the criteria. And when you're up at the top of the food chain, like the Coast Guard Academy, the people you recruit have other choices. Uh, so. We run the spread because it's exciting, and I think this year, as I see these first couple practices, I think we're going to have an exciting offense. We, we built on the defense the last couple of years. Well, I know Derek was hurt for part of last season, so uh, starting off with a healthy quarterback has to be a different place, you know, a good, a good place to start 
going into uh, the practices. Absolutely, and, and a lot of Derek's success as he grew, he cut down on his turnovers last year. The name of the game in football, I don't care what level you play at his turnovers, he cut down, kept us in a lot of games. We're excited to have him back, and he looked sharp. I saw one of the, our better read option plays just as we walked off the field a few minutes ago by Derek. It looked like you could put it on TV. Now, Derek, now how has the, you know, the, the rigors of the classroom and the rigors of the football field helped you not only as a, as a you know, as a student, but as a player as well. Does it go hand in hand? Yeah, I think so. Uh, especially for a quarterback and the offense we run, discipline's kind of the, the name of the game. Um, and like I said, everything everything we do kind of has a, a structure and organization to it, and the same thing goes with our offense as well. Um, like this play, we'll set up this play, we'll set up this play. So I like it. School's kind of the same way. So. Pretty much my whole day is structured around like that organization aspect. You like running or throwing it? I love throwing it. Yeah, you I'm a little smaller, but I, I like coach. throwing it. Yeah, yeah. Throw, we, we we throw it around. <laughs> All right, we're. we're I want I've I've always wondered this. We kind of opened with it. You're not a typical college student. You know, you're you're not only at a, an institution that's challenging academically, but you're held to a, a standard higher than maybe you know. There's a handful of schools in the whole country that are held to the standard you're held to. And on top of it, there's a bigger picture for you than simply graduating from college. T talk to us about what it's like to have that bigger picture and the burden that goes with it. Well, I've had, I've had that big picture in my mind since I was probably a little kid. Like most of my friends wanted to be like professional football players. I wanted to play football at the Coast Guard Academy and serve in the Coast Guard. So I've wanted to do that since I was a little kid. Um, but I think the, the stuff that I've learned on the football field since I was five years old has kind of helped me like lead, this leadership aspect, the discipline aspect, all of that um, is just kind of leading me up to, to when I finally graduate and whatever I'll be doing when I get out into the field. What do you think you want to do when you graduate? I want to go to a boat. I'm not really picky as to where. Uh, when I was a little kid, I wanted to fly helicopters. That's why I originally joined. Uh, but since then, I've learned a lot more about the Coast Guard and about what we do. Um, I want to go to a boat somewhere. Now you mentioned the discipline and the great things you learned from five years old. We've talked on this show a number of times the importance of youth coaches. How important youth coaches are in getting kids started in the, on the road to, to you know to, to high school to college. Who was your youth football coach? Uh, from probably the time I was seven to probably the time I was like twelve, my mother was my youth football coach, and she oh, wow she was the main reason I got into football. When I was five years old, I was new to South Florida. Um, it was kind of like a way to meet friends is how she, she looked at it because I was, I was brand new. Uh, I really didn't want to play, and from basically that first snap, I, I loved it ever since. Well, I can tell you right now, you guys start your season up in a few weeks, and uh, you're, you're getting, getting close right now. Yeah, yeah and you, you worry about all the little things, but when you have a guy like Derek at the control, some of the stuff you worry about, he takes care of for you. So. I won't ask the coaches, that, Derek, but I'll ask you, what's the one team on this schedule that you got a bullseye on? Uh, the one team you want to play? Uh, Merchant Marine Academy. They, they, got, they got one from us last year. So, it, so you own payback in your senior year. Yes, sir. It'll and be I, nice to get the trophy back. And I have this marked down. It's the home opener at the Coast Guard Academy on September 10th. That's when you can go and see if they can bring it back against Great place Merchant. to see a football game. If you haven't been down at Coast Guard Academy, Tremendous, tremendous venue, Coach. Yeah, you know, I'd, I've been around college football my whole life, and you cannot see a better game on TV or in person than the, than the Merchant Marine Academy at Coast Guard anywhere. It's as exciting a game as there is anywhere in the country with a great venue, and it's just fabulous. Now, you've been doing this a long time, so it's not like worth, you know, you, there's a lot of new things coming your way, but you had to have a good feeling when you brought in a quarterback named Victory. Yeah, you know, he did. I'm, I think Coach Fleischman <laughs> saw him at an all-star practice. Yeah. By the way, we didn't bring him in too early. He got off the wait list <laughs> about a month, in, about a yeah. month before yeah, he that's came. Correct. Victory so, came. So victory came late to the Coast Guard again. Late. I think I, Very you know, late. Wait. So, and he hung in there. And thank God he did. You know, he hung in there and, and hung in there. And, uh, yeah, you know, I remember Coach Fleischman telling me when he went down to recruit him that, that he saw him at an all-star game and he was this kid who, I don't think he won that many games in high school. No, he won three games. In three games. Three and, games. Uh, and he was with all these Division <laughs> One kids and we said, well, you know, we thought he was, was kind of overlooked. But uh, it came off. Well. Listen, Derek, go into your formation. That's what the coach wants to say yeah. at the end of every game mm -hmm. this year. I don't think there's a coach in the world that doesn't love taking a knee more than any other play. In the last 20 <laughs> seconds of the game. Now he's humble, so I don't know about this, but be honest. Do you look in the mirror at home and, and make up 
sayings using your own, you know, victory is here tonight. I mean, you have to, I mean, I've, come on, it's the I've best game. I've honestly never heard, I've never done that, but Casey would. The, the amount of times, like, I've heard people come up with, like, cheesy, like, things to say when you get out, When you get out of the shower, <laughs> does your teammates go, the sweet smell of victory? I mean, no, that's no, <laughs> it all depends on my practice was that day. Well, um, I, I would love to be the play-by-play -play guy in the, in, the, in the merchant game, you know, as they're rushing around the end, and you're elusive, and you're rushing, and, and I can yell, and victory eludes them! It would be such a great call. I, would, I really would love to be your play-by-play -play guy. I would, oh, I would have so much fun with it. Right, big, ex big expectations this year, Coach? You know, we always have, and yeah. I think this group has worked very hard. I'm pleased where they are. Again, though, the minute you walk off the practice field, you see, okay, we've got to correct these mistakes to get to those big expectations. But yeah, I'm excited. I think we're going to be back to where we were a couple years ago offensively. We've got some bodies to fill defensively, but kids step up at the academy. Coach, before I let you go, what do you look for in high school kids? What are, you know, what are the traits that you want to see high school kids display that, that would lead them to a place like the Coast Guard Academy? You know, there's one thing I ask every kid that comes into my office when we come up for a visit, and you know, you know you're a little bit different than maybe a person with three earrings and green hair. But are you a little bit different than even your very best friend on the football team? And, and you got to have something in you that says, I, I want to sacrifice, I want to serve my country, I want to do what the Coast Guard does. Because you can't twist somebody's arm to make them a different person. They have to have something in them, and then you've got to recruit them against those other high-level academic schools and the other service academies. What would be your advice to the kids that are, because we have a lot of kids that are going to watch this, this show, and what would be your advice to them, to the kids that are in high school right now, if they want to get to where you're at? Uh, definitely, I, I think the big thing they look for is, uh, is test scores, so SAT, ACT, and I, I took each one five times, um, which is probably way too much, but uh, I had to take it five times just to get like a, a good enough score, and then just on top of that, you know, just take school seriously. I, I'm, a lot of my friends back home didn't. And uh, unfortunately, they're they're finding out now that things are a lot tougher. Than they're they, there, than and they you're expected. here. Exactly. That's, yeah. So um, just that it's it's pretty simple too. Well, if you have some place better to be on September 10th, I can't imagine where it would be. Head on to the Coast Guard Academy and watch them take on their arch rivals in the home opener. We want to thank head football coach Bill George and quarterback Derek Victory for joining us on Casey and the Sports Doctor, and we're very much looking forward to the upcoming season of the Coast Guard Academy. The Voice of Reason, brought to you by Motorsports Nation. In the great movie Field of Dreams, Shoeless Joe Jackson looks at Ray Kinsella and says, is this heaven? And his reply is, no, it's Iowa. Well, when you watch this, 13 boys from Waterford, Connecticut, will be heading onto their Field of Dreams and hoping to find their baseball heaven as they head to the World Series in Ottumwa, Iowa. I want everyone to put aside your local affiliations and your loyalties for a second and really think about this. These kids are headed to the World Series. They're 13 years old. They're barely teenagers. They devoted their summer, endless practice hours, time in the cage, and game after game under enormous pressures to get to this point right now. And they're here. They rode a giant limousine, one of those party buses, to the airport at 4 o'clock in the morning. Do you think they were asleep? No chance. Wide awake, amped, and smiling ear to ear. They have lived in their blue Waterford baseball t-shirts all summer with their names on the back. So proud to be part of one of our region's great sports achievements. The community rallied, and we're very proud of them for that, and offset some of the exorbitant costs to get them to Iowa. Because if you're a parent or a friend, I mean, you have to be there, right? This might come along once in a lifetime. So this week in Iowa, it'll be blue. Waterford will be out in force and Waterford Nation, some of the best fans around, will be supporting these kids. You see, they're gonna forever be united by this team, this experience. Many of them will remain lifetime friends, others, will be lifetime teammates. Teammates are special, teammates are family, teammates matter. You will never experience the bond you experience with a teammate. Sports can be so powerful in its ability to unite us, and these kids will forever be united under this experience. They are so easy to root for. 
And so many of these names are so familiar to me and those of you in southeastern Connecticut. And they deserve to be heard. So allow me to give you the roster of the Waterford 13-year-old Babe Ruth team heading to the World Series. Ryan Bakken, Trey Brennan, Jared Burroughs, Ben Jerome, Sam Lanuza, Mike Morelli, Ryan O'Connell, Connor Padeswa, Ryan Salvador, Matt Sanford, Luke Sokolsky, Anthony Tanucci, and Robert Zawacki, all led by head coach Dave Laffey. Now, boys, I hope you soak up every second of this because you're gonna talk about it forever. You're never gonna forget this experience. So for this week, I'm not sure if it's heaven, but Iowa this week, you might be in it. Motorsports Nation in Waterford, Plainfield, and Rehoboth, Mass. Offering the best deals on motorcycles, ATVs, utility vehicles, scooters, and personal watercraft. If you like discounts, you'll love Motorsports Nation. Visit them at www.motorsportsnation.com and make sure you ask for Kyle, Scott, or my man Vern. So it's very important to know your doctor. And in this segment, we're going to let all of you out there get to know our doctor just a little bit. Very simple. I'm going to give you choices. You let us know what you're thinking. Let him rip, Casey O'Neill. Most likely to watch Major League Baseball World Series or the Little League World Series? <laughs> Major League Baseball World Series. Right off, and right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, right off the bat. The yeah, children I'm, I'm, I'm on your skin right off the bat, yeah. <laughs> well, children don't like going to the doctor anyway. More likely to listen to the music of Black Sabbath with Ozzy Osbourne or Ronnie Dio? Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, that's a slam dunk home run for me. I'm a huge Ozzy Osbourne fan, solo career, and with Black Sabbath. The great Lee Elsie just shed a tear. He's a huge Ronnie Dio fan. He only had two albums with Ronnie James Dio. Huge Dio fan. More likely to enjoy, Pacino or De Niro? I'm a De Niro fan all the way. Ooh, Love Robert De Niro. All right. College football or professional football? College football. You said that because the Coast Guard Academy is in the house right now. I, I could have, but there's nothing I like more than watching a college football game. A Notre Dame college football game, I might add. A UConn football game. I like the pageantry. I like the Saturday nights. Um, you know, 80,000 and what, 30 different venues you know, nationwide. I, I love college football. DH or no DH? No DH, definitely. Is NASCAR a sport? No. Is cheerleading? No. Okay, so you just alienated 70% of the country and all women. Cheerleading? The gymnastics, yes. Cheerleading, no. Ooh. Bird or Pierce? Bird. Pierce is close, though, for me. Very, very close. Bird. Godfather 1 or 2? Godfather 1. The original. Masterpiece. Opera or symphony? Neither. Have you been to either? No. I, 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 I don't want either one of them. So wait a minute, you don't, NASCAR is not a sport, but you haven't been to the symphony either. You're somewhere. I'm going to see Shine Down Saturday stuck night. In the does middle. that count? No, it does not. All right. Pedro or Clemens? Pedro. I mean, listen, Clemens was, you know, my guy as, as you know, as a child. But uh, Pedro Martinez, the year he had in 99, the All-Star game, uh, the one-hit performance at Yankee Stadium, striking out 17. Uh, love Pedro Martinez. Rice or Ortiz? You're killing me now, you know that? You really put me on the spot with this, yeah. aren't you? They're Jim, both, they're both Jim Rice, my first love, number 14 in your program, number one in my heart, David Ortiz, all day and twice on Sundays. Big you, Poppy. You've just alienated just about everybody at sure, this point. Sure, so. <laughs> let's keep it going. Okay. If you could go back to high school, that'd be Wheeler High School. <laughs> if you could go back to high school and be a star in any sport at any position, what would it be? Um, how do you know I wasn't? How do you know I wasn't? I would say I'd be the, I want to be the star quarterback at Wheeler, but Wheeler didn't have football. So I would probably say uh, I'd go back to being baseball, being a second baseman, and being a QVC All-Star, which I was my senior year. You could be any, you could be a star at any, you want to be a QVC All-Star at second base? We had base? four sports at Wheeler High School. We had four. If you were a good enough quarterback, you could have played elsewhere. I, listen, second, I, if wait, I could go back to high school, I would be, Your dream is to be a QVC high school second baseman? High school quarterback. Oh, man. High school listen, quarterback. He's the best doctor I know, but if you don't want to go see this doctor, I think we all understand why. Listen, Ozzy Osbourne over Ronnie James deal any day of the week. <sighs> Killing me, sports doctor. 
So it's time to see what you, the viewers, thought about our question of the week, which was, if you could have the skill of a professional athlete, any one thing that you'd want to be able to do for a day, what would that skill be? And I, I mean, Sports Doctor, I, I think it's very interesting. There's so many things that, that uh, I don't do well. And I would like to do lots of things. <laughs> we, well. we had a lot of people chime in on this one again, Casey. You know, Kristen says her 15-year-old son would like to throw 105 miles an hour like Aroldis Chapman. That's a pretty good one. Throwing yeah. is definitely one that resonates. Uh, my dear friend Anna Trusky said she'd like to know what it feels like to swim like Michael Phelps. I mean, to be that fast in the water is something that I think I can understand that appeal. Uh, John says have a touch like Messi. Oh, Lionel, Lionel Messi, the yeah, great sure. soccer player. Yeah. You knew that. that did, did. <laughs> my, uh, my friend Zach said he'd love to be able to be an archer. Imagine the feeling like William Tell shooting an apple right off of somebody's, somebody's head. Off mine? I would shoot. I would. No, okay. I would do that. I, next segment on Casey and the Sports Doctor. I shoot an arrow, a, a, an apple, off the top of your head. And Mike says have a massive home run swing like John Carlos Stanton. He says he'd love to be a hit of the ball 600 feet. Yeah, you can't. You can't argue with with Stanton. Uh, Mike Souza, uh, great youth baseball coach in New London, says speed. You can't yeah. teach it. Speed, speed, speed. What would it be like to just be that fast? I don't know. I'd like to find out one day. Dave Nagel says, how about play lights out golf like Tiger Woods back in his heyday? Yeah, you have to agree. Now, uh, Joey O said his skill would be he'd like to run like Usain Bolt. He'd like to be able I mean, I, to be able to be faster than a car. Fastest man in the world. I mean, that's, that's pretty yeah, cool. That's real, I've, never had, I've never had speed. Power, yes. Yeah, speed, no. You look like a power guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, on the other hand, was very, very fast. Uh, another one of our uh, listeners and uh, viewers said, uh, I would love to run long distances at a very fast pace like Meb. Uh, Keth Lesge, who's the Boston Marathon winner. But Meb, you know, to imagine running yeah. 8 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour for 26 miles. No, I can't even bike that fast on my, on my, on my bike. I, I, I can't I, do it. I struggle driving 10 miles an hour for 26 miles. <laughs> so, I mean, well, what about you, Casey O'Neill? Well, if you had one thing, one skill, one I mean, I know you've got a lot of them. So what would you like to do? You know, I, I really did think about this, and, and the running definitely appeals to me, but uh, my father and I have talked about this any number of times. I would like to be able to throw from the outfield like the great throwers like Clemente, right. like Ichiro, like Winfield, Guerrero. I want to know what it would be like to pick the ball up on the right field fence, turn, and just air it out. Throw a P? Oh, I'd love to just know how, to, how that must feel, to have a lightning bolt for a right shoulder. Yeah, you know, I think as a kid, the, the best dunk I ever saw in my life was Dr. J taking off from the free throw line and, you know, Pulling a Michael Jordan before there was Michael Jordan. I mean, to me, even after all these kids and what they're doing now, that is the single greatest dunk I've ever seen in my life. I'd like to do it. I'd like to get up, fly from the free throw line just one time. I'd want somebody underneath me so I could send it on top of them. But dunk it and send it home. I think that's a, that's a, that's a great skill. One that I'll never have. Lots of great skills that we will never have. But thank you very much, everybody, for, uh, for tuning in and giving us our feedback on our question of the week. I mean, we... Uh, so often ask these questions and your responses have been brilliant. So yeah, keep them coming because everything is different and everybody's got something to say. MJ Sullivan has a great lease deal on a 2016 Hyundai Sonata SE. No money down and only $259 a month for 36 months. Or get a lease deal on a 2017 Hyundai Elantra SE with only $2,000 down and only $175 a month for 36 months. Stop in for more details. You can see these and other summer deals always at MJSullivanAuto.com. So we're so fortunate to have a live audience again for the second consecutive show, and they have questions, and we're going to do our best to ask them. Now, last week, I got into a lot of trouble. I got booed by my mom because I suggested that the WNBA might be a flawed system and they should probably reboot it. And you should have. I wasn't wrong, but this week... We'll see if we can get the sports doctor into some trouble, get the heat off of me. Let's start with an easy one, sports doctor. WNBA's overseas commitments, are they hurting the end of the season? Um, of this season? I think everything kind of hurts it, doesn't it? I mean, the Olympics hurt it. Uh, the overseas commitments, it just seems like the... You know, the WNBA, they have girls coming in late. Uh, they have girls leaving early. Um, if it's a league, it's a league. Uh, it can't be an in and out. So I, I think it does hurt. Well, I'll take it a step farther. The WNBA better figure out a way to pay, pay its players more right. because pretty soon you're going to see overseas leagues offering millions of dollars and saying you can't go play in the WNBA, and there's not enough prestige to the WNBA to not go and make the millions of dollars you can make overseas. Right, it's a bit of a suffering product as it is. 
So we, you got to do something to juice it up a little bit. Hey, are baseball's new rules and replays killing the game? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been one of this for years. I mean, actually this year, I hate instant replay in baseball. You're talking about a sport that needs more flow, more rhythm, more passion, more energy. There's none of that now. I mean, I, I, I don't like it one bit. I mean, I used to love watching Billy Martin or Lou Pinella come out of the dugout and kick the bag and throw some dirt around. Now, all Joe Girardi does is go to the top step and then go to the video camera in New York. I, I, I think baseball is a little... Yeah, it's, the replay is bad for baseball. I think since replay exists and we can't put the genie back in the bottle, it's necessary because if we're going to have replay, I want to get the calls right. And you can't have everybody... It's still a game played by humans. But you can't have everybody in the, in the crowd being able to look at the phone and see there, a replay that's occurring on TV and not be able to use those same replays. It would be a disservice to the game. I hate replay in general. I wish it didn't exist in any sport, but it does, and it's too late to put that genie back in the bottle. Um, next question. The Red Sox, better or worse next year without Big Poppy? Um, I think better, to be honest with you. I think uh, with some of the young kids they got on the farm system right now, you've seen Ben Attendee come up and, and play well in the outfield. Uh, I, I, I don't think they're going to miss a beat offensively. Uh, they're going to replace some production, but they've got some kids coming up. I think they're going to be all right. The pitching staff is what I'm worried about more than replacing Big Poppy's numbers. I think Bogert's bets... Bradley, Ben Attendi, the, the four killer bees, are all going to improve. Right. And they're probably going to go out and try to sign an Encarnacion or someone like that to pick up the slack. Saying that, you never know what it's like when the guy that's been the rock and sure. the anchor of your lineup is gone. What you can't replace is the man. The man is the man, and that means the responsibility of being the man. Who is going to be ready next year to be that to be the next icon of Boston, I'm not sure anybody is. Yeah, we'll see if it's Mookie Betts or Xander Bogarts. My, my money's on Mookie Betts. He's a star, and I think you agree on that as well. I do. All right, last question. Why do you think more women watch the Olympics than men? <laughs> oh, boy. Keep in mind, 80% of the country right now is already looking to hang you in effigy. <laughs> Um, because I think that the Olympics is um, a casual sport. I think it comes around every four years. It's kind of like a, a novelty act, like the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is a bit of a novelty act, so you're going to get more people watching it. Listen, there's not probably a lot of women watching the Jaguars and the Browns on a Thursday night, but I am. But when it comes to the Super Bowl, when it comes to things like Olympics, and obviously, too, there's a lot more females involved in the Olympics as well. So they want to watch the gymnastics, the swimming, and, and other things, too. So probably, um, you know, just, just a different gender of people. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to save you, and I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to <laughs> reinterpret some of what you said at the end. The easy answer is because they're smarter. Okay. Okay? But to break it down, I think you touched on one thing, which is that events are easier to watch across the board. Right. And so the Olympics is an event and it's an easier watch because you don't have to watch just the one thing. You can watch any number of things. So there's a bigger array for women to tap into than there is, and men are already watching other sports and perhaps- Right, men are sports fans. Well, women are sports fans as well. And perhaps the Olympics provides a bigger menu of sports for them to watch, but I think the other other reason, and I, and I do think this is where I will tightrope the, the gender line here and yeah. hopefully not say anything that's, that's stereotypical, but the Olympics are about stories. Right. What, what, the reason we watch the Olympics is not just because of the events that are going on. It's the great storytelling. The, like, like Peter Wappy would thrive at the Olympics. So, I mean, so do you think that the, the women audience that watches Gabby Douglas on a Tuesday night will watch gymnastics at any other point no, in the year? No, what I'm if it wasn't the Olympics? No, what I'm saying is the Olympics tells you the story of how these people got there. It okay, humanizes so, them so people. And guys it's more watch appealing. sports and women watch stories. Okay. He said that. Uh, I'm sorry. He said that. What I'm saying is that as an event with more depth to it, women are able to enjoy not just the sport on the, or off the court, but also the background that led up to it. In other words, women are more complicated and in-depth and are higher level thinkers than men. That's true. Men just want to see other men beat each other into the ground. Women are a little more complicated than that. So thank you for watching the Olympics, everybody. The sports doctor, not me.
Well, that's it for us sports fans. Special thanks again to Philomena's Restaurant. Join us again in two weeks. Boy, are we excited about this sports doctor. Our high school football preview show and extravaganza. Yeah, all the coaches from the ECC coming in and uh, you know reviewing their teams and everybody's very excited, Casey, about high school football season. I know you are. I am. We're looking forward to it. That means game day is on the horizon. So keep sending in those questions, comments, feedback. If you want to absolutely go after the sports doctor, you can on social media. Find us on Facebook at Game Day Connecticut Sports, Twitter, Instagram, and light up that social media feed for us as always. And thank you again to Philomena's. I'm Casey O'Neill. And I'm the sports doctor. Boom. Boom.